I just got done recording the Roquan Smith video, which is actually going to come out after this one because this is definitely more of a priority. And then I still got a live stream at six. I haven't even eaten yet today, but the show must go on, man. It's your boy Rico from Street Scores and the Washington Commanders have released their first 2022 unofficial depth chart of course we gotta dive into it man we're gonna look at not only every position but every player as well and of course the guys on the back end we gotta take a look at whether or not they're likely to make the team who's going to get priority you know special teams really matters if you're one of those guys on the further end of the depth chart special teams is gonna play a large part in whether or not you make the team and then of course we gotta it's a depth chart so we gotta take a look at who they consider wide receiver four five and six who's higher on the depth chart at linebacker defensive end defensive tackle safety i'm excited man i haven't even looked at it yet too so i'm going to be just as surprised as y'all are so i'm really excited y'all are going to be legitimately getting my first initial reactions to a lot of this and again we're going to analyze every position and every player but before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one this is my third or fourth time saying that today golly man hey Man, but the show must go on i gotta keep the content coming make sure y'all pull up to the live stream at six today it's the sunday live show rescheduled to tuesday it will be sunday from now on make sure y'all pull up tonight and also make sure you pull up every friday to the 7 to 9 p.m broadcast podcast and without further ado let's get it All right, so we're going to start with the offense, and they have it all the way from first to sixth, which is really interesting. Wide receivers at the top, you have Terry McLaurin first, along with the wide receivers Curtis Samuel and Jahan Dawson also in the first column. Those are your starters. Then second, you have De'Ami Brown, Dax Milne, and Cam Sims, and I'm not really surprised. I've heard that Dax Milne has been oppressing enough to the point that Dax Milne may be above Cam Sims technically on the depth chart. But then again, Cam Sims, you need a big body target. And he's one of the very few that we have outside of the tight end position. So I think he's fairly safe on the roster as well. But technically, from what I've been hearing, Dax Milne is above him on the depth chart. Even though here, I mean, they have three wide receivers at the same time, depth chart wise, that are allowed to be starters, second string, third string, and all of that. So on here, technically, he's not, even though, I mean, visually he is but technically he's not and then third you have mark and michelle who i'm not surprised has been making plays left and right i mean he showed out at the fedex field saturday night practice but he's also been making plays since before then and even after then as well and then alex erickson brought in here to be primarily a returner and so with him being above Kyrick mcgowan and matt cole so far he's the safest bet to potentially making the team as our punt returner our primary punt returner because i do feel like Jahan dotson will probably be able to punt return occasionally when we really 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 need a play but it's going to be rare we're going to need a guy that's going to be the primary guy that's doing it the vast majority of the time and right now alex erickson is in the lead but Kyrie mcgowan has a little potential to him matt cole was just signed a couple of days ago last night dang that felt like that was a couple of days ago with as many videos i've been making that was just last night when we signed matt cole that's crazy but he's a speed demon with loads of potential alex erickson you already know what you're gonna get from him he's very safe so again i feel like he's more likely but matt cole is the guy with the higher ceiling at punt returning so maybe he makes the team plus he has a lot of experience in special teams coverage as well he's been a gunner so he brings a little bit of troy apke to special teams as far as that goes as well so we'll see he's competing and then kelvin Harmon, i'm happy to see him higher than i expected He's higher than Kyrick McGowan and Matt Cole, so we'll see. I doubt he makes the team, but he's been making plays in training camp as well, and I'm excited to see where this goes. Then offensive line, looking at the tackles, you have Charles Leno and Samuel Cosme as your starters, of course, but then Cornelius Lucas and Sadiq Charles are your direct backups. I'm not surprised. Cornelius Lucas is literally the backup, like the backup swing tackle. If there's an injury to Samuel Cosme and Charles Leno, Cornelius Lucas is your guy that's next up, even though we have not seen him practice in training camp yet but i mean ron Rivera keeps downplaying it so maybe it's not something to worry about 
but he is our direct backup swing tackle. He's the West Schweitzer equivalent to the tackle position. And then Sadiq Charles is interesting because he's technically a backup tackle and guard. So, and then you have Alex Akingbalu, Rashad Hill, and Aaron Montaro. We'll see which of those three end up making the team. Maybe neither, but who see? We'll see. Those guys are competing and they deserve a chance. Then the guard positions, you have Andrew Norwell, Trey Turner is your starters, obviously. Wes Schweitzer is your direct backup. He can start at center, left guard, or right guard. Wes Schweitzer is one of the most underrated players on this team. And then you have Chris Paul already ahead of Nolan Laufenberg, Willie Beverly and Dion Calhoun I'm very happy to hear that I've been hearing great things from him and I've been hearing that he's literally getting better and better every day at practice even since rookie mini camps and he's looking like a complete and he's looking like a guy that may even be higher than that may even be better than Sadiq Charles soon from what I've been hearing in training camp so far so at the very least your backup guards are Wes Schweitzer, Chris Paul, and Kinda Sadiq Charles, and I'm perfectly fine with that. And then your starting center is Chase Roulier, Tyler Larson, the backup. Even though Wes Schweitzer is a better center than Tyler Larson, in my opinion, Wes Schweitzer, again, is so good at left guard and right guard that technically you prefer to have Wes Schweitzer as your backup center because if there's an injury to Trey Turner or Andrew Norwell or either one of them is not producing to the level that you'd hope you want Wes Schweitzer to be that guard and if for some reason at the same time Chase Roulier happens to be hurt Tyler Larson will technically be your direct backup again Wes Schweitzer is a better center than Tyler Larson is a guard that's just how special Wes Schweitzer is and then you have Keith Ishmael as your backup backup center and John Toth after them and Keith Ishmael looks like he's pretty much destined for practice squad and John Toth maybe he makes the practice squad or he just probably ends up getting released and then moving the tight ends logan thomas is of course your number one but he's on the pup list so technically john Bates is your number one tight end right now but for the purpose of this depth chart and analyzing this John Bates is your second tight end, obviously one of the best blocking tight ends in the NFL already. Cole Turner, I think he has elite potential as a receiving target, and him and Carson Wentz already have chemistry. Carson Wentz has better chemistry with John Dotson and Cole Turner than he even has with Terry McLaurin so far, even though today was a really good day. And that's another video I got to do. I got to do a video breaking down what happened today as in day 12 of practice, August 9th on Tuesday. That may just have to come out tomorrow because, again, I still have to stream at 6 p.m., but we'll see. But up until today, Carson Wentz has had way better chemistry, like an obviously different, like an obviously better chemistry with Cole Turner and Jahan Dotson and Terry McLaurin. Now they kind of closed the gap a little bit today, especially with Cole Turner hurt and not practicing. But I don't think it's a, but I don't think it's a surprise because Terry McLaurin wasn't here until training camp. Cole Turner and Jahan Dotson have been catching passes from Carson Wentz all offseason since we drafted them. And then back up to them, Sam is Reyes, which makes a lot of sense. He can contribute on special teams very well. Ron Rivera is very high on on special is very high on him in special teams and with John Bates being one of the best if not the best blocking tight end in the NFL already Sam is Rez is not far behind him he's stronger and more physical he just doesn't quite have the technique as a John Bates but if we're talking about if you were to give it like a Madden overall rating just straight blocking pass and pass and run combined if if John Bates is like a 97 block and Sam is Rez is like a 94 you probably give Logan Thomas like a 78, maybe 75. Cole Turner, as of right now, is in the 60s. But with his size, he has the potential to be a better blocker than Logan Thomas once he can learn to lower his pad level more consistently and get his hand placement better. Logan Thomas is pretty much a guy that's just good at getting in the way. He's still technically a dual threat tight end because he can do that, but you don't expect him to go out there and block elite pass rushes like you could with John Bates and even Samus Reyes at times. Again, he's not as bad as Jordan Reed and Vernon Davis is blocking goals at all. I don't believe Logan Thomas or, or Cole Turner are that bad at all. But just in comparison to John Bates and Samus Reyes, which is why I'm talking about it, because I want to give a reason why Samus Reyes, I feel like he should make the team, is because you just don't find blocking in a tight end like that often at all and now that he's starting to make plays in the passing game and practice i'm really excited about him and then fifth is curtis hodges so that answers my question i've been wondering between curtis hodges and armani rogers who's higher on the depth chart as of right now it's curtis hodges and i'm pretty sure it's because of his blocking curtis hodges is already ahead of cole turner in his blocking and he's probably on the heels of logan thomas and may already be comparable to him in blocking and with him being 6'8 
Same problem as Cole Turner. If you can get his pad levels to be a little bit lower, better hand placement, he can end up being an even better blocker than Logan Thomas eventually. And you can't defend 6'8". He's been making play after play in practice. I'm not surprised. And then you have Armani Rogers, one of my favorite players on the team, especially ceiling-wise. I'm a true believer that if you give him enough time and coach him up right, he could, be ba he could basically be another Darren Waller. And he's been showing that in practice the past week. FedEx Field, Saturday night, Monday in practice, today in practice, really the past couple of weeks, especially with all of the injuries to the tight end group, he's been making the most of his snaps, and he's been one of our best receivers, regardless of position. And then after that, you have Eli Wolf, a Georgia Bulldog, who I don't expect to make the team, and then you have Alex Armagh, who's technically a fullback, who doubt he makes the team, but who knows, if we really want to keep a fullback, if Scott Turner wants to use a fullback, Alex Armagh is technically the only fullback on the team, even though I wouldn't be surprised if we try Samus Reyes in that role a little bit and then you also have quarterbacks of course Carson Wentz Taylor Heineke Sam Howell that's obvious Carson Wentz is your obvious starter Taylor Heineke is your obvious backup but Sam Howell is way further in his development than I expected than even the coaching staff expected at this point again he's not quite ready but he's way further ahead mechanics wise reading the field I mean even in the Saturday night practice there was a play where he ran through like three reads and then made the right pass he made the correct decision and threw a really good ball for a touchdown I I believe it may have been the Mark and Michelle or maybe somebody else but either way Sam Howell is already ahead in development than I expected and again even the coaching staff and they showed that they showed their belief in him by the fact that they released Cole Kelly immediately after the Saturday night practice or it was like right before I can't remember but somewhere centered around there Sam Howell was balling enough to where they're like oh yeah we're good we got our three we can start to take a look at other positions and 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 use that roster spot for another position so we can bring in extra guys there because we already know who our three guys are. And I could definitely see a scenario with how fast, with how quickly Sam Howell is developing that he could end up being QB2 at a certain point in this season. Not right now, but at a certain point in the season with him being more talented than Taylor Heineke, he just has to get all of the mental stuff down to catch up to Taylor Heineke there. But once he catches up to Taylor Heineke mentally, with mechanics, nuance, technique, being able to read the field, make decisions and things like that, with him being a superior talent with stronger, with a much stronger arm, he's going to become quarterback too. Because if there's an injury, because if there's an injury to Carson Wentz, you can basically throw Sam Howell out there and still utilize 100% of the playbook. You throw Taylor Heineke out there, granted he can win you some games like we saw last year against a first place schedule, the hardest schedule in the NFL, but you still have to change up the offense and you really move, and now you're probably only utilizing like like 60 70 percent of the playbook and we saw Carson Wentz do a read option today and even though I feel like Taylor Heineke should be able to do that Scott Turner has shown that he doesn't trust him to do it because we never really saw Taylor Heineke do that at all last year when Kyle Allen barely played we started running read option like the instant that he got into the game I don't know why Sam I don't know why Scott Turner doesn't like running read option with Taylor Heineke but you can clearly do that with Sam Howell and you can also clearly do that with Carson Wentz don't want to do it a lot but you can and then running back the obvious three, Antonio Gibson, J.D. McKissick, and Brian Robinson, even though Brian Robinson is on Antonio Gibson's heels. Antonio Gibson is fumbling. He's dropping easy catches out of the backfield, and Brian Robinson has been doing everything well. As of right now, blocking-wise, is pretty much blocking-wise, Brian Robinson is easily in third place. It's J.D. McKissick, big gap. Antonio Gibson, big gap. Brian Robinson. But if Brian Robinson improves in pass protection, Antonio Gibson is going to be looking really ugly trying to get carries, man. I believe in Antonio Gibson. I think he's going to be explosive. Y'all know I'm really partial and really biased towards anybody from the Metro Atlanta area, area like Antonio Gibson, JD McKissick, Steven, Steven Montez. I'm going to be their biggest fans when they're doing well, but I'm also be their harshest critics when they're messing up, most notably Antonio Gibson with the fumbles in the drop passes. My main point with Antonio Gibson is you're transitioning from wide receiver to running back. I get that. So you're going to struggle with pass protection. You're going to struggle with fumble with fumbles like we've seen. You're going to struggle with vision and things like that. But at the very least, pick a struggle. You're moving from wide receiver to running back. Why are you dropping passes? Why are you not as good as JD McKissick or even better than JD McKissick as far as getting open in the passing game and running routes and things like that? Why are you not a really good pass pass catching running back at the very least you gotta pick a struggle you can't you can't bring the negatives of transitioning from wide receiver to running back and also not be a good wide receiver it's just no excuse but Antonio Gibson again I'm rooting for you 
in my on in my for for biased reasons like i've already stated i would love it if antonio gibson was the best player on our team but as of right now he's not looking like it and again brian robinson's catching up to him and i really hope antonio gibson balls out but we'll see jonathan williams fourth in the depth chart not surprised i thought he would be fourth in the depth chart coming into training camp but i've been hearing a lot of great things from jared patterson but apparently jonathan williams is still above him and then you have reggie bonifon who's behind him it looks like jared patterson and reggie bonifon will be on the practice squad and i'm not even sure if jonathan williams isn't on the practice squad but apparently he's above jared patterson right now which is very noteworthy then on defense no fifth or sixth so this is much simpler it looks better on the screen matter of fact since the since there's no fifth or sixth we might as well just go ahead and zoom in for a better view starting with the defensive ends of course chase young and montez sweat obviously and while chase young is injured and on the pup list, James Smith Williams is your starting defensive end. Casey Tuhill right behind him. Y'all know I'm really high on Shaka Tony. I think we need to try him as Sam linebacker because I've seen enough from the senior bowl before we drafted him that he can cover. And I think he can literally just basically be a more athletic Anthony Barr. I know I keep saying it, but I truly believe in that. Almost as much as I believe Armani Rogers could be a Darren Waller. It's like hand in hand. Those are my two gems to where I feel like if we just develop them the right way, they could be really good players for us. Then you have William Bradley King behind them, Boomi Rotimi and Jacob Ponizuik. And I thought it was really cool that William Bradley King, Shaka Tony, Casey Tuhill, Boomi Rotimi, all of those guys, even though it's last year that we had those injuries of chase young and montez sweat those guys got really meaningful snaps in real regular season games while we were still trying to make the playoffs and that experience is irreplaceable and that made them better players so that's one positive from the terrible last season that we had and then at defensive tackle of course you have deron Payne, jonathan allen as your starters Fidarian mathis is right behind them when we run our five defensive linemen looks which we're probably going to do a lot more this year than we previously have the past couple of years you're going to have Montez Sweat, Deron Payne, Fedarian Mathis in the middle as your nose tackle, Jonathan Allen, and Chase Young. And then, of course, David Bada is next up. I've been hearing great things about him. F.A. Obata and Daniel Wise behind them. I've been hearing good things about them. And F.A. Obata, remember Ron Rivera complimented his special teams ability so he's quite likely to make the roster one way or another. And I think he can also play some defensive end pretty well as well. So I think he'll be straight. I think he'll end up making a team. And then you have Long Shark long shots tyler clark and justin hamilton but hey man they have a chance to compete still a lot of weeks left before we get the regular season football before we get down to victory man roster make the most of it guys and then at linebacker you have jamin davis technically as your outside linebacker cole holcomb as your middle linebacker i find it very interesting very interesting that they only have two linebackers on the depth chart literally we've been running this nickel thing where we're where we only have two linebackers on the field the majority of the time since Ron Rivera and Jack DeRio have been here. But they still kept putting three linebackers on depth charts. Whenever we had unofficial and official depth charts, most of the time, if not all of the time, from what I remember, it was always three linebackers on the depth chart. They would just have Khalid Hudson or David Mayo as the third one. But now they're just full blown, head first. We're only having two linebackers on the field. And like I've already talked about in several videos, so I don't want to dive into it too much now. But like I keep saying, we're probably going to be two linebackers, five defensive backs, four defensive linemen, like 80% of the snaps or more this season. We'll probably be five defensive linemen with two linebackers and four defensive backs for like maybe 15 percent of the snaps maybe at the most we'll probably have three linebackers on the field for five percent of the snaps again if that so it only makes sense to only have two linebackers in your depth chart when you do stuff like this jamie davis and cole holcomb of course david mayo's be getting a lot of reps with the ones but that's mostly just been red zone stuff mostly just stopping the run drills but i think if we were in a game jamin davis is probably starting over david mayo even in the red zone of course and then anywhere else on the field there's no reason to have david mayo on the field jamin davis is your obvious starter Khalid hudson probably behind david mayo on the depth chart then you have dejon harris milo eifler nate gary and Trey Walker, remember, we just signed Nathan Gary, and we'll see because Ron Rivera said they wanted somebody that can run and cover, and he can also rush the passer quite well. You could argue he may even be a better pass rusher than coverage guy, so I can see Nathan Gary making the team over a couple of these other guys, especially like a Milo Eifler who's fairly small. Khalid Hudson is also pretty small as well. And then cornerback-wise, Kendall Fuller, William Jackson, and my boy Benjamin St. Juice, the starting slot with Danny Johnson right behind him in the slot, but I've been hearing 
hearing that Josh Drayden has actually made more plays this training camp than Danny Johnson. I think Danny Johnson is fairly safe just based off of how good he looked in the regular season. We haven't seen Josh Drayden in a regular season game yet. Danny Johnson was a big part as to why our defense played way better during that four game win streak last year. So even if Josh Drayden may be out playing him in camp so far, that just more so says how good Josh Drayden is than Danny Johnson more so falling off and having a bad camp. Cause I've been hearing good plays from Danny Johnson. He's even cut he's even covered Terry McLaurin well at times. But Josh Drayden working mostly with the backups, pretty much all with the backups, has shined more though. And then behind Kendall Fuller and William Jackson, of course, Corn Elder and Christian Holmes, been hearing great things about Christian Holmes great 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 of course Trey Apke has only is only here because of special teams we're not going to play him in actual game situations and I thought it's really interesting that Channing Stribling is above Dewan Neal and Devontae Bowsby we just signed Devontae Bowsby recently he's already started to make plays in camp Dewan Neal had an interception from Sam Howell a couple of days ago but apparently Channing Stribling who between him and Dewan Neal two guys coming from the USFL did have a richer history he had more stats to, to brag about he had better film that you can watch better tape the review over a Dewan Neal so I'm not surprised there in that way but I've been hearing great things about Dewan Neal and Devontae Bowsby so if, if Channing Stribling is above them he must be playing even better even though I haven't really heard his name much and Corn Elder really as your fifth corner I guess maybe at worst sixth behind Christian Holmes that's good to hear because I was one of those I'm because I'm one of those guys that I still believe we should try to bring back Tory Mentire because he looked good when he was out there he just got hurt on that pointless play the Hail Mary with zero seconds left against the Falcons I still think we should bring him back but it sounds like these other corners are playing so well that we don't have to and again Trey Apke technically cornerback wise like purely as a corner he's dead last but He's third technically because he matters that much in special teams. And he's probably going to run with the third team because they're just going to keep giving him a chance every year. Every season, we're going to try Troy Apke out there at corner just to see if he can give us anything. And he always fails the test. But again, he's always going to make the team because he's because he's a really good gunner. That matters. And I mean, before we move to safety, Benjamin St. Juice is your starting slot corner. I find it interesting that they care more about him as as the fifth DB rather than a safety. But Benjamin St. Juice is balling. I mean, y'all already know he's been the corner that's been giving Jahan Dotson the most problems. So I'm not surprised. We'll see how much he's actually on the field come Sundays. But I'm really excited, man. And then safety wise. Bobby McCain's obviously your starting free safety. Cameron Curl's just starting strong safety. Been hearing nothing about but ridiculously good reviews about Cameron Curl and his communication. The whole secondary is just playing better, first of all, because of continuity. I mean, our entire starting 11 minus Chase Young being hurt is the same starting 11 from last year. So especially for the secondary and even including the linebackers in a way, there's going to be far better communication. First of all, the communication was just straight up better and the chemistry, all of that was better once Landon Collins moved from being back deep to purely in the box as our Buffalo nickel. And Bobby McCain again looked immediately better after we made that role. He was never great, but he was solid. And I think going into this off season and going into this regular season, Bobby McCain has definitely looked like he can be a nice starting caliber free safety. But again, ideally, like I've been saying, Percy Butler will eventually become our pure free safety, rangy, single high guy. He's the rangiest player on this team. He's the fastest player in the secondaries between him and William Jackson. So when he does shine, he shines very bright. He shines the brightest, but he just has to become more consistent to, to where he takes over Bobby McCain's starting spot. And that may not even happen this year, but I think Percy Butler's talent is so undeniable. He's going to play especially when we get in the dime formations and then Derek Forrest has been super balling as well I've been hearing that you can argue he's been a top 10 maybe even top 5 player so far in training camp I think top 10 is far safer but the fact that he's up there out of a 90 man roster one of the 10 best players so far through training camp that's huge and he's definitely leading the team for the Buffalo nickel spot right now again Benjamin St. Juice is technically slot corner not Buffalo nickel but he's so great at coverage he's so elite that it's going to be hard to keep him off the field. But if you need a guy that can cover and run stop, that's Derek Forrest. Then behind them is Farad Gardner and Jeremy Reeves. Jeremy Reeves, obviously the third string free safety. Farad Gardner, I'm happy to hear that he's the third string so strong safety. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that he'll make the team. But, you know, another guy from Atlanta that I'm really rooting for. And Felix 
from George Carmi's stream that I did last night brought up a great point. First of all, make sure y'all go subscribe and follow both of those guys. That was an excellent stream. Hilarious. A lot of great points. Felix brought up a great point that Farad Gardner looks bigger and is bigger than Milo Eifler and Kalik Hudson, who are both linebackers. Milo Eifler is Mike linebacker. And Farad Gardner is that strong safety, and he's bigger than both of those guys, like obviously bigger. So that's really interesting. Farad Gardner was a linebacker in college. I don't know why we moved him to safety since he's gotten here, especially since he's bigger than some of our linebackers. But I'm assuming that means Buffalo nickel, at least a competing for it. A linebacker transition to safety, that literally is the Buffalo nickel. Uh, safety line linebacker hybrid. And then Steven Parker, your fourth and only your only fourth string safety out of the group highly doubt he makes the team but who knows man again i'm gonna say it for all of these guys that are deep in the depth chart you have all these weeks of training camp make the most of it because you never know you may surprise somebody somebody may be a tory mctire out of the group and then of course lastly special teams tressway joey sly tressway cameron cheeseman but it gets really interesting first of all joey sly is our franchise kicker love it i i mean i i'm gonna keep saying it we lost at least one game last year, one or two, just purely because we didn't have a good, consistent kicker. Joey Sly is that guy. Hopefully, he's that guy for the next 10-plus years for us. I think it's really interesting for punt return and kick return-wise, Alex Erickson is clearly in the lead. It'd be different, maybe, if like Alex Erickson was first on the depth chart at kick return, but not punt return or vice versa. But the fact that he's both, it clearly shows that they're that they feel that they think very highly of him and right now he's clearly in first place to make the roster first of all as a receiver because he's right now our primary punt and kick returner and then you have Kyrie McGowan who's second I'm surprised Dax Milne I'm not surprised as our second string punt returner and then Kyrie McGowan behind him and then you have Jared Patterson our and then you have Jared Patterson as our third string kick returner but again with as far as he is on the running back depth chart and kick returner depth chart it's quite likely that he's probably just gonna end up on a practice squad but i think it's really interesting again alex erickson actually one of the biggest takeaways and not necessarily surprises but like oh okay i see out of this entire depth chart reveal alex erickson the clear cut primary punt and kick returner again john dotson will probably go back there and do it occasionally when we really need a big play but we literally brought in alex erickson to literally just do that punt and kick return but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please leave a like if you liked it if you learned anything please let me know how you feel about this depth chart what changes would you make do you feel like it's definitely going to be some big changes by the time we reach the regular season again this is the first unofficial depth chart i believe they do a depth chart before each preseason game the one that's coming up next is saturday against the carolina panthers they're probably going to do another depth chart before each preseason game do y'all expect major changes for each one even besides just guys getting cut do you see some shifts do you see some guys that are below certain guys above them right now do you see them passing them so man definitely get in the comment section let me know that and also, man, I appreciate all of the support, man. Shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors. Name you see scrolling on the screen right now. And, man, I got to get something to eat, man, while I'm editing this video at least. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out. And I still got to do the Roquan Smith video. Oh, I just remembered I got to edit that. I already recorded it. But, golly.